Episode 16, letting someone else go first. <laughs> yeah, let's let the lower ranking Demon Slayers go first. So they can, you know, die. So that we can live. We can't afford the casualties right now in the higher ranks. <laughs> he's got his priorities straight. Looking for his fellow sleeping buddy. But of course she's fine. Wow, he's really, really going hard on this tired thing. <laughs> He's really tired. Really, really winded. Yeah, another show I feel like they would have just started killing and it would have been taken for granted that there was no saving them. But not Tanjiro. Oh, look at this guy all of a sudden. That's noble. It's not really the time. <laughs> There you go. That's satisfying. Yeah, this is like the tutorial level for Spider Mountain. You'll be alright. <laughs> you can't drop it. Did you just get Tanjiro's name wrong? That's sort of amazing. Tanjiro has become Manjiro. I keep feeling the sense of dread, like this is where this is going. That Inosuke is going to get captured. It feels like one of the worst possible outcomes. Here's the next crew. They're going to be a little higher level. Those that are still alive. Now that's not how the Demon Slayers work. You must die. All of you must die before the higher ranks show up. That is your purpose. It's another day in the Demon Core. That must be unbelievably horrific to witness yourself doing that and feeling helpless. The other Demon Slayer puppets didn't seem cognizant of what they were doing. Probably a huge mercy. That's his mother? Rui is concerned. Got some doubts about this situation. You got somewhere to be, Rui? Why ships that? The tone of this? Oh, oh, don't tell father. The tone of this interaction changed real quick. It was all fun and games until Rui showed up and talked about father. Rui seems like the kind of kid who just got too much attention as a child. But now there are stakes for her. What the hell is father? We're aware, yeah. We've established that. Interesting self-own, but okay. <laughs> What, did you just limber her up for better attacks? It seems like it's a fight to the death for everyone at this point. It feels like she's fighting for her life. Ugh. Oh, I don't know what you make of that as Tanjiro. <laughs> In this case, like, you didn't need me to tell me that. I would have done it anyway. It's very satisfying to hear that. But does Inosuke listen? I feel like he does. So thinking about this right now, I'm realizing I'm enjoying the, the Tanjiro Inosuke dynamic. Inosuke was sort of introduced as this bloodthirsty man boar pig, but then it's become clear pretty quickly since then that he's actually a great fit. And perhaps it feels a little bit convenient that he was able to shift into like a more palatable role so quickly. But actually my gut feeling is that it makes sense. It's not that he's like this jerk or mean-spirited person as his fundamental motivation. Like he's not really malicious or misanthropic. It's more like he's just wild and has very little fear. And so he's going to do whatever he's compelled to do. And that could run on all the varying sides of what would be sort of acceptable behavior for a viewer or like a crew. But it's not like it's valueless, it's just his value. But then Tanjiro comes along and is a great fit for him because Tanjiro speaks his language but also is like one step beyond his language. Tanjiro has more externally visible fear but that definitely doesn't stop him. He also is acting freely. He happens to be very societally aligned but all of that is freely chosen. It's really actually who Tanjiro is. Plus this extra thing of being 100% connected to his vision, which is something Inosuke doesn't have. And he also makes it really easy for Inosuke to slip into it because he's not trying to change him. He's not trying to control him at all. In fact, I feel like they have a mutual respect for that sort of similar element of their nature. And so I get how someone like Inosuke, who is sort of consumed with ability and freedom and self-expression, would be willing to take heed of what Tanjiro is saying. 
and put his instincts on hold a little bit to see what Tanjiro is about and where this leads him. Because Tanjiro being sort of this incredible source of like will and strength and just general goodness immediately sort of pulls you along in his jet stream, even though it's not his intention. It's just you can't help but fall, fall in with him. And in some sense may even provide something that Inosuke has been looking for for a long time because he sort of reached the pinnacle of this wildlife, it seems. But even though he's insanely wild, he actually seems like a pretty smart guy in his good instincts. So meeting Tanjiro is almost like an invitation to something bigger. And it seems like he's intuited that enough to actually be a cohesive member of this group. Here we go, here come the, the reflections, the calculations. What if we tangle them all up? We don't cut them, we just get them, get them wrapped up. Yeah, that's what it is, isn't it? <laughs> oh, he just yeeted her. <laughs> well, you, you can win fights without massacring them. This is the age of awakening for Inosuke. How high can you toss her now? It's become a game. <laughs> you just gotta do it again, you know? And again and again. Do it for all of them. Daddy's gonna be so pissed. That doll. And legend has it that Zenito is still huffing and puffing to this day. <laughs> there he is. Like, as if she could answer him, right? She's got a muzzle. They're busy doing good work playing puppet basketball. <laughs> I thought she <she> doesn't care. <laughs> I'm watching, I promise. This time. Oh no! Even Inosuke is pissed. He astutely observes Tanjiro. He's learning, taking it in, life. I feel like, yeah, there's something about the Tanjiro's purity that makes this relationship work. Inosuke knows, he's no fool, he can read him. Tanjiro's the real deal. <laughs> I mean, he's only even competing with him because of, because of respect, you know? This is the, the doll. You don't need a head when you got abs like this. <laughs> you have no idea even. I know, I often too feel a certain type of way about birds. But this show has largely redeemed them. Stop and reflect on this plan. <laughs> like, she cannot speak. This whole thing, this whole thing is so like... Devil May Cry. Devil May Cry meets Dark Souls. Of course, the Kesagiri maneuver. What neck? <laughs> you had me a slash. See Tanjiro, or, or Manjiro, or whatever your name is? I can get slashed better than you. Tanjiro has got this. Purity. That's real living. Real forest living. You've inspired the cotton balls. That's real love. No one's ever asked me to think before. <laughs> yeah, see, he's, a, this is just, he's living a life, man. He's having a great time. This is just different. He's been waiting for someone worthy of him. Tanjiro is worthy of the best of them. Nice. Simple slash, but effective. The amount of focus it must take to do that while standing on your head. Yep, he's got a little extra thing. A little extra thing that you don't have. This is a little more free. In this case, watch him. Oh no, what is daddy gonna think? You took way too long. No one can put up with this. We don't have any time for some reason. Yeah, I can't put my finger on it exactly, but for some reason the thought came to mind that Inosuke is like this really free character, but that actually in a sense, Tanjiro is more free. And I think that has something to do with the fact that the greatest 
amount of freedom requires a certain degree of structure, even if that sounds paradoxical. As Inusuke living in this chaotic state, you're going to be limited in scale in terms of how grand the things are that you can apply yourself to. He's all over the place and unstructured, but Tanjiro, being 100% clear on who he is and what he's going for, can sort of give that his all in a way that's not encumbered by anything else. There's no loss, if that makes sense. And so there are fewer obstacles in his path, and I feel like that's how that fight played out, where Inusuke is recognizing that Tanjiro isn't attached to any particular thing. He's not attached to you know, being first or winning or competing, he's already got something better than that. All of those things are minor compared to Tanjiro's vision, which to me feels real because people who really know who they are and what they're doing and why they're doing it and get that sort of high level of utility from their, their daily lives, don't really bother with that kind of thing. They don't need to get satisfaction or personal utility out of like putting other people down or competing or having it be this relative thing, looking for accolades, embellishing the facts of one's life, you know, like feeling aligned with your daily reality. It's just a lot sweeter of a reward than any of those things. And when your eyes are open, you know when you see it in other people, and it's hard not to take notice if you're someone who wants the same. Inusuke, as someone who never has had any boundaries, is probably going to be more likely to see that and more likely to be drawn to it because he's like a raw stage of it without the refinement. Tanjiro offers something of a next level for him, which he would gladly take because that's the journey he's on. It's just that he didn't know what the options were or that there were higher levels until he saw it in real life. And so that's going to grip him. It's very interesting and exciting to think that maybe one of the, the greatest philosophical transformations will happen in this wild boar character. Something has awakened in Inusuke. <laughs> <laughs> Here's this philosophical awakening. Starting with a hip toss. Rumi really jinxed it, huh? <laughs> yeah, everything was going great. She was having a good time until he showed up. That is amazing that his trajectory ended up perfectly landing on her. That's some excellent touch power from Inusuke. I mean, just think of the bright side. At least you don't gotta face daddy's wrath. Yeah. He's coming home and he's not gonna be happy with the time you've wasted. Tanjiro's like, I can't kill you if you're happy about it. Oh, or not. Or not. Or not. Quick, give us your tragic backstory. Those are just Tanjiro's tears. She had a rough home life, I guess. There we go, there we go. Squeeze it in! Squeeze in that backstory. You little punk! <laughs> I hate this kid. I have a feeling father's death is not going to be as tranquil. And Tanjiro is not going to look at him with those eyes. Yeah, he takes no pleasure in it, that's for sure. Are we going to get more of this backstory as we progress through slaughtering the spider family? A 12 Kizuki. I know what that means, for sure. Oh, is it like a, a blood moon? A blood moon guy or girl. Yeah, I mean, well, we need that blood, right? We're doing the side quest thing. And because the show is legit a video game, it's going to be structured like that. There's going to be a boss at the end of every level, each of which makes you slightly more powerful until you get to the final Michael Jackson boss. Bum, bum, ba, da, fun Taisha fact. And we got Inosuke this time. Put on shirts. That too. Manjiro. That's correct. We're getting farther <laughs> and farther away. He's me. I I hope he never gets it right. I would feel so validated. I legit thought his name was Kanjiro for a second. You don't need to conform. You don't need to conform to his desires to get names right. We all know who you're talking about. Oh, we got it. I'm disappointed. <laughs> I mean, even I can get Tanjiro, though. So that was episode 16. And I gotta say, the standout for me was definitely their relationship. There's something really beautiful about it, and it feels organic. I like how, without any desire, or without any sort of ask of him, it feels completely natural that Inosuke would end up being very tightly aligned with Tanjiro. Tanjiro is just sort of this guy who, like, really sort of is a self-containing bundle of energy and life and outlook. He's sort of this fully formed or very close to fully formed human being. And so he's able to just like be in the world, not have to know everything, but be able to sort of let go and therefore be this fully 
fluid and water-like thing that will adapt to the environment and circumstances around him. There's this interesting sort of confidence and power that comes from the fact that nothing around him will destabilize that sort of core set of things that he has, which is what allows him to survive and not only survive, but to flourish actually, despite pretty horrific circumstances. And who wouldn't be caught up in that energy? Who wouldn't see that potential. And I feel like Inosuke especially would gravitate towards that as someone who also in a significant way is that self-containing source of energy. It's just that he doesn't have the deeper connection that Tanjiro has. And so that's going to be intriguing. Tanjiro is him, but in some sense, more, more powerful, more free, more equipped. Hence, I think why he's sort of competitive on the outside, but also clearly admires Tanjiro at heart. And I feel like with this episode, they've sort of cemented a bond that has become a really pleasant surprise and one that I'm looking forward to seeing develop as the show goes on. Mm -hmm.